I'm Brian Miller. I'm co-director of Pacific Paranormal Investigations, and I'm also the tech manager. I've um, been involved in paranormal investigating, wow, since 1980. So what is that, 33 years? More than half my life. How did you get involved with um, paranormal, like in 1980? Um, I actually read a lot of books as a uh, teenager and discovered a very well-known haunted location in San Diego that was written, written about by Dr. Hans Holzer, and that is the Thomas Whaley House in Old Town. Very famous location, and uh, I went down and did some investigating with some very crude equipment and had some incredible experiences and shared my evidence with the curator of the Whaley House, a very wonderful woman by the name of June Redding, who was very open to discussing the paranormal and, and looked at um, paranormal investigating as a way of getting people involved in area history. And uh, she encouraged me and uh, my nascent team at that time, in 15, uh, to continue investigating, had some incredible experiences, and uh, I was hooked for life. That's really incredible when you get started at a young age. So how did you find um, PPN? Um, I, uh, had, like I said, I've always had a lifelong investigation, an in interest in paranormal investigation. And I've been doing it solo for a very long time. And uh, it was just something I stumbled across when Ghost Hunters became uh, very big on television and I was like, wow, that's very interesting. I like their approach. I thought it was unique and I really appreciated the uh, approach they had, which was to disprove um, claims of paranormal activity. And so I started searching around on the web uh, for, a, for different paranormal teams. I got involved in different forums and then happily stumbled across PPI and, and met Carl and some, some of the other people on the team. And, and they recruited me. Happily. Okay, <laughs> okay so, um, let's see. I brought my recorder. Oh well, that's all right. Um, so that was in um, February of 2007 when I joined PPI and and at that time, um, we were very, very active. We were doing a lot of cases. It was, it was uh, a really great time. We had a lot of fantastic investigations, some of them very memorable, and, and it was great. It was a lot of work, though. I didn't anticipate it to be so much work. So much. So Can much you work. describe your work and how much, so much work? Well, you spent hours? Did you hours. spend all night? All of this well, the first is the initial investigation, and a lot of that work that's done by the case manager, like Deborah here, is hours and hours on the phone with the client, setting up, determining whether or not there's enough there for us to even set up an investigation, and if there is, scheduling that, where it works with everybody's schedules, which is a big deal, because everybody works, and everybody has their own jobs and things going on in their lives. Physically going to the location, which sometimes can be hundreds of miles away, and uh, setting up for the night and going for upwards of six hours in a location, investigating, rotating, documenting where every single person is at every moment, you know, because mm -hmm. it's it's not just like a run in and see if you get scared in the dark, it's uh, documenting all the environmental conditions and all the research that goes into that. Solar activity, uh, geophysical data, uh, recent, uh, well, hourly weather observations, because we're looking for patterns. Mm -hmm in case anything paranormal actually turns up in our, our data. And then hours and hours of recording, audio recorders, um, video cameras, digital video surveillance, and, and all that has to be looked at. So you might go in and run your recorder for three one-hour sessions, but you've got to count on spending at least two to two and a half hours for every hour you recorded listening, isolating, documenting, and then sharing. Okay, so that gets pretty tedious. Very yes. tedious. Very okay. tedious. And that turns a lot of people off because they think if they're getting into the paranormal, it's just going to be all exciting. And then after you leave the venue, it's like, uh, you know, sit around the uh, campfire and have a, a wonderful, reminiscent 
you know, reminisce about it and discuss it with, with friends and, but no, because we're trying to conduct science, so it's, mm -hmm. it's a lot, a lot of work. We, we usually tell our clients it could take upwards of six weeks. Six from weeks. From the time that we did an investigation before we can come back and present all our findings. How many cases do you work on at one time? Um, when we're really busy, we could be working on three at once. And when we're really slow, like we are now, which we greatly appreciate, it's one. <laughs> <laughs> Which gives us time to do other things like, you know, work on white papers, mm -hmm. do research, uh, do podcasts, and other types of uh, public outreach and education, because that's what we're all about. So you get a lot of people call. They call every day. Do you get crazy people call? Do you get, I mean, how do you filter out the calls? I mean, you just take every call that, that say, that asks you or asks your team to come down and check my house. We do you get a lot of calls. We don't get a lot of calls. We get a lot of emails. Emails. Almost everything is electronic. Um, we have mm -hmm. a request form on our website, which is a, a database that was um, in, uh, actually created by one of our investigators, Jason Siegman, and uh, it's proprietary. And a client can actually log in there and put in their their request, and it comes directly to us that way. We've already compiled a lot of our information. Now what we're doing is compiling all of our evidence, putting it into this program called the Pacific Paranormal Research Database, or the PPRD. And that's what we use to present the final report to the client. So the programs that you use, are they very costly? We tend to use uh, programs that are either over the counter or open source or free. Like for audio analysis, we use Audacity, which is a free download and it's absolutely fantastic. Mm. If we need to convert audio files from one format to another, we like to use open source. PPRD was designed especially for us by Jason. So we're the only group that has that particular program. That's great. Okay. Okay, so if you, do you have any stories you can share? Um, <laughs> what would be, what would your place would be the, I guess, the most scariest place you Well, I can't, in? you know, in all the times that we've been investigating, um, when I first got involved and was so low, I think I've, I've been more creeped out than any time that I've ever been with PTI. I've, I've, never, I can't, I've never been frightened on any of the cases that we have investigated with PTI. Mm -hmm. um, even when the evidence has been rather startling, uh, I've never been frightened. Um, but I have been, mm -hmm. um, in the past, uh, not frightened per se, but let's just say, um, exhilarated. Um, one of the most memorable experiences that I had that I can talk about because it was a public venue was back in 1981 time frame and it was at the Whaley House and we were there after hours after the museum had closed down and we'd been interviewing the guides and you know documenting the activity that had been going on and there used to be a fire escape on the back of the building it's no longer there since the, the new organization that manages it took over and they they ripped that staircase down. It's actually a fire escape that was um, required by California state law at the time to open it as a museum. So we went up the staircase and we're peeking in the windows and mm -hmm. upstairs and as we were coming down the stairs, I had a landing, and, you know, halfway down the stairs, and we were coming down the stairs, there, I noticed that the sound of my footsteps sounded really strange. Loud, booming almost. And it sounded like I was wearing, you know, leather-soled boots. But I was wearing soft-soled shoes, I was wearing tennis shoes. And as I noticed that, and I was thinking about it, I only had one other person with me, um, the sound faded away. So I set up another shot and looking through the study window and taking the time exposure with my trusty 35 millimeter camera, totally, totally manual, no automatic settings on it all, at all. Um, taking a long exposure, and I heard footsteps go back up the stairs. Not only did I hear the footsteps, the person that was with me heard the footsteps, and I felt those footsteps vibrate the staircase. It was something physical that happened. Now, mind you, that staircase is not original to the house. It was added later. And I set up a, a shot really quick, and I was like, my heart was beating, I was 
really excited and I took another shot and didn't really get anything, you know, I would call paranormal, but there is there are some odd anomalies in this still image that was captured seconds after hearing these footsteps go back up the stairs. And I think that um, as an investigator of PPI, I'm trying to um, capture an event of that same caliber with the equipment that we have today. And so far, it has eluded me. <laughs> <laughs> That's how rare it is. <laughs>